Hey everybody, it's Linda, and I want to wish you all a happy new galactic year or galactic spin New Year's Eve, because today is the last day in the Zolkine. Zolkine translates to to measure light. Okay, it's galactic time. And there's so many things with the galactic calendar that we could get into. And I'm, I'm not going to go through all of that today. I just wanted to come on here and give you a quick update on what today is. Because tomorrow is a brand new day for a brand new galactic spin. It's literally in, in galactic terms. It's, it's the last day. And it's funny because as a collective of humanity, at least in the United States, we look at February 2nd as Groundhog Day sort of like a poop loop. It keeps repeating itself because you think of that movie with Bill Murray and everybody kind of accepts that February 2nd is Groundhog Day here and that it is sort of like a loop. And today's the last day of the poop loop that is this messy, sticky, inside out, inverted, crappy matrix system that we've been in. So if you're measuring time and you're paying attention to the spiritual communities, leaders, leaderships that are they're talking about how this is a brand new time for new cycles beginning. We know astrologically speaking, there's going to be at least five planets, I believe, just in March alone, the first three weeks that are at a zero point, which is zero degrees, which is a brand new, you know, when it enters a new sign, it goes to zero degrees of that sign. And to have five planets do that in a three week period right before the equinox is so incredible. It's so incredible. So to have all these cycles within cycles ending, we know when something ends, it's like a, like the clock. When it expires at midnight, it starts a brand new day, right? So it's nothing to be afraid of. Today is yellow cosmic sun. It's galactic kin number 260. There's 260 days in each galactic spin or each galactic year. We call it a galactic spin. I'm going to read the mantra to you. We're in a resonant moon phase, but and I'm going to explain this mantra a little bit. I'm going to bring it down to earth so that you can understand, because that's kind of what I do. All right, so here we go. I endure in order to enlighten transcending life. I seal the matrix of universal fire with the cosmic tone of presence. I am guided by the power of flowering. I am a galactic activation portal. Enter me. And I want to break this down for you because a lot of people in the spiritual community listen to um, different channels like Paul White Gold Eagle and he reads from New Earth scribes, different writings they do daily. And there's a lot of talk about the galactic, this mantra is you know, put forth every day as, as like news, you know, and, and it's fantastic when you understand what each mantra really means and what it stands for. So I endure in order to enlighten. Think of the spiritual warrior. You're a spiritual warrior. You're watching this channel. You're on the spiritual warrior path. You understand what it means to endure over the many experiences that you've had. You can call it lifetimes if you want. But over the many experiences that you've had, there's been a lot of uh, killing done for you standing up for your beliefs or speaking your truth. There's been uh, lots of mocking and ridiculing and flat out attacking, we'll say because you're speaking your truth from the light of your soul. And so you're in here incarnate in this life, like the golden ticket life to experience that ascension. So here you are in this lifetime. Why are you enduring this? It's to enlighten. It's because you're bodhisattva. Bodhisattvas are like Jesus or some of the saints or Kuan Yin or people that have been incarnate that have risen to the level of ascension. They're here to teach so that you can up ascent so that we can enlighten the soul. What is enlighten is to bring light to darkness, enlighten a room to help people carry less density, to help people self-empower. You can't take anything away from anybody that's going to be permanent and lasting because that's like giving somebody the answers to a test. And it's far different than that too, because there's karmic consequences for just removing people's lessons. It's like cheating. So in the universal laws, you don't do that you can endure something and show a way of how to exist in a more lightened state in order that somebody can learn something for themselves. They can see themselves in you. They can see a reflection of the lesson that they might need to learn within you. That's why you endure. That's why you're a sacred warrior. Um, so you're in 
I endure in order to enlighten transcending life. That speaks transcending life. What does that mean? That's the ascension right there in a nutshell. You're transcending to rise above that life, life in a body, life in 3D. Does it mean you're going somewhere? Does it mean you're, no, you're, you're transcending the life that is limited in a linear sense here in this earth. You're transcending the finite to bring the infinite, the infinite part of your soul that can live forever, that already is eternity. You're transcending life. So you're bringing in eternity. I seal the matrix of universal fire. Universal fire. Um, you're, you're, I seal the matrix of universal fire with the cosmic tone of presence. In the galactic kin, there's, there's 20 tones. And so the universal tone that is you and your unique sound frequency signature, your unique galactic signature, your own soul frequency, your own sig soul signature has a tone to it, a certain vibration to it, which is unique to every single individuated being of the divine, which you are, if you have a soul, which you do, or you wouldn't be watching this channel. So the being that is your soul is the universal fire. That universal fire is love light that comes down in through your crown. It comes in and you can send it out through your heart. You learn how to work with it in various ways, but that is your, with the cosmic tone of presence. What is the cosmic tone of presence? That is your soul. A cosmic tone, so the vibration and sound of your soul being that can come in to the present moment is your presence. Your presence radiates light. It has a frequency that can be heard in the sound of a tone. Okay, it can be heard. I'm guided by the power of flowering. And flowering, think of that, is your light being seen. Think of a flower blossoming. You know, it's it's pretty amazing to, to understand the flowering of the crown chakra when that opens and the soul light can come in through your crown. That's Father above. Father above coming in, you're anchoring into Mother Earth. Think of the two coming together, the um and the yang, the yin and the yang coming together to be what you could consider opposing but complementary forces. It's opposing when it's masculine against feminine, if it's day against night, if it's white against black, if it's division, that is opposing. But can it be opposing and complementary? Yes, you got the divine feminine, the divine masculine. Think of them forming a partnership with inside of you. So instead of just breathing up the energy through earth or breathing in the energy through father and crown, think of the kundalini at the base of your spine rising up around through all the chakras, you know, like a snake going around, around, around. It looks like a snake, they say kundalini. Well, imagine your crown chakra, the lotus blooming flowering, allowing the light of your soul to come down and in through the crown where you're bringing energy down in this way and you're pulling it up through the earth and you're making the yin yang, yin yang, the um yang, the dark and night, male and female. You know, you're bringing fear and love together as one. Not that masculine and feminine is fear and um, it's not fear and love, one's bad, one's good. It's not dark or light is bad or good. Dark is just the absence of light. So when you bring fear and light together, the light always wins because light and darkness will always show you what's hiding there, which is what's happening all across the planet. It's pretty incredible. I am a galactic activation portal. Enter me. Well, I'm going to show you on this app here. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Okay, this is your 260-day galactic spin. It starts in columns over on this side because the one with the circle on it is the day we're in now. It's the, whoops. It's the last day down here. Last day. All right. It starts at the top, and it goes down for 20 days, and it does that 13 times. No, no, sorry. 13 days and it does it 20 times. And there's not 20 lines across here, but there is, um, let me show you, let me give you a better visual of this so you understand what I'm saying. All right, these are wave spells. 
this is what it looks like. Each color represents a 13 day period throughout the year. So it's a two week period where each day could be great for starting like a new project or, you know, something like that. If you're consciously working for 13 days and you start at the beginning of a wave spell, each day would mean something, something different in that 13 day period. So it might be like for the first four days, you're working on something just like the four elements, just like the earth, water, air, just like the signs in astrology when you know, Taurus is the first earth sign and that kind of thing. So like when something comes back to a second time, it's more enhanced, it's stronger, more powerful, able to be seen better. So when you're working through wave spells, it's something that you're guided to do when the divine timing is right for you. I'm here telling you now, I know most people don't understand this because I'm still learning this too. And I've been working consciously with this for the last galactic spin. So I've been working on this for what, about nine months now, trying to be consciously aware of it. And I don't remember every day, but I did get this app to help me. And I'll tell you what it is. You can get it yourself if you want. It's 1320 Sync. All right. That's the name of the app. It's a great app. Um, there's always something new to learn. So in learning these, I just looked down at the clock and it was 1147. My galactic kin number is 147. It never fails. It never ceases to amaze me how everything comes in perfect alignment when you are working with galactic time. So now, um, what else did I want to say? Yes, tomorrow is the first day of the new year. Um, I believe I'm going to be having my third grandchild will probably be born tomorrow as well, I believe. So um, that's kind of cool. And also I'm doing my very first jewelry party. So that's kind of cool too. I'll be selling some of my own creations that I make. I'm making feather earrings now, but I just kind of keep moving from one thing to the next, whatever spirit guides. And it's exciting. It's fun. These energies that are sweeping across the planet are for you, it's for humanity, it's for the collective, it's to turn everything that was stuck in the poop loop of the matrix, the old dirty matrix system that was inside out, it was inverted, it never spiraled up, it always stayed down. It was, it was circling, 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 and it was kept down. Every time it tried to spiral up, it was pushed back down. Not anymore. So like I said, the light being brought into the darkness is gonna expose a lot of things and there's going to be a lot of heads spinning. There already are. People's, people, some people just can't take it anymore. Just remember, there are soul contracts that the creator has divine dominion over, and your soul over when you leave the planet, if you leave the planet, like when that time is for you. So don't get caught up in the outside world as much as you should get caught up in the inside world of you, discovering what's right for you. What is your next creative endeavor that you can do that brings you joy? What can you do that's going to help you um, share the truths that you absolutely know inside of you that might help somebody else? You cannot take away anybody else's pain and suffering and trauma bonds and all of that, no matter how connected you think you are, you cannot take them away from anybody else. Because if you cheat on a test by universal law, that test still has to be, it's like, it's like how karma works is like lessons are repeated until they're learned. So if you cheat, you're creating karma for yourself. You can't take that away or heal anybody else. All you can do is provide support and assistance and guidance or mentorship. You can show what you've done based on your own experience, but you cannot teach that which you do not know already by your own experience and your own tests that have been passed. And the self-initiation phases that come in when you learn your lesson, when you truly pass a test and you get that self-initiation, you can then teach those things. So if you're jumping ahead to teach, there are a lot of teachers out there that haven't experienced it and they can be seen or energy can be seen, but there's people that can't see that yet because they're looking up to these people. Well, they're going to fall. The higher they rise, the harder they fall. Just remember that. Don't be surprised 
as things unravel, because what was inside out must be turned right. What was upside down must be right side up. All corrections will be made by universal decree, by the creator's decree, by our divine creator sources and universal laws decrees. It's the way it works. And now as we're stepping into a new galactic spin, this is stepping into a new age. The Hopi prophecy was fulfilled. We've now had the, com the comet coming through our solar system, which fulfills that Hopi prophecy. And here we are starting with all these zero point um, planets that are going into new, to new signs. So starting new cycles in each sign out of a, their degree points, starting at a zero degree point. All these things, astrologically speaking, that are coming by springtime, by the equinox. Like February is going to go by in a blink of an eye, you guys. So just be ready for some head spinning universal truths to be revealed. Try to stay out of judgment. Try to stay out of fear. Remember, we're balancing the fear and the love. We're bringing them together. Without knowing, without the bad meal, we would never know a good yeah, we would never know what a good meal or a great meal is unless we've had a crappy one. So I, I, I like to say that because it's so true. We're bringing the fear and the love together. We're not denying the fear. We're not destroying the fear. It's part of us. It's part of our experience. So we bring it together inside of ourselves. We marry those thoughts together. If you haven't seen my last video, I put one up on advanced teachings and it was in my car and I just, I had to get it out spirit soul was guiding me and saying do this now so i recorded it i got it out and it was about an experience aha moment that i had about marrying the two thoughts together when when there's a fear thought so whether you create it or whether it's going through your mind field whether it's going through your own personal fields take the fear thought marry it with the positive thought bring it into yourself watch that video because it'll give you some tips and tricks about how to do this and how you can bring pieces of your fractal self if, if they're still in fear how you can heal that by marrying it with the balancing the opposing but the complementary force that goes with it because without that force it's going to stay in fear and it's going to stay outside of you and not be in wholeness so in order to bring that piece back home you say i've done this work i've done it i've done it you might have been missing this one piece because i know i was i was missing this piece until i experienced how to do it so I teach you that in my last video. Go back and check it out if you haven't seen it. And this Saturday night on my channel at 7.30 Eastern time, Bev is going to be, Bev the Astrologer, Bev Morrison, she's going to be joining us live so that we can talk about the energies in February and what's coming and all these new beginnings and cycles. And I don't even know what she's bringing, but she always brings something great to the table. I know the new moon in Leo we're going to talk about. Nope, the full moon in Leo. <laughs> Correction. Self-correction. See, that's what we do. Did I make a mistake saying that? No, I just experienced a, a slip of the tongue. And so I self-corrected. This is what we're doing with everything. If you do something you feel like was a mistake or a misstep, or you want to say a fail, it doesn't mean that you failed anything. It just means that you can now see how this choice might have been better. So you self-correct and you stop blaming your parents and you stop blaming your teachers and you stop blaming the world and the government and everybody, stop the blame game. We know now, we know everything in this point is your own responsibility and stop carrying other people's responsibilities. If they're adults, they can take on their own and carry their own load. It should not be on the parents. Everybody lives through their own experience and tries to do better for their children than their parents did for them. But you grow older, and you live and you learn. And the longer you're on the planet, the longer you revere your parents and their parents for enduring this crappy matrix system that's here, that we're here to bust. So because we have a golden ticket to be the system busters, does that make us any better? No, it just means that we got the golden ticket in line and we got to experience this life when we did, awaken how we did, and be able to show by our own example how we might have conquered certain things. Everybody's doing their own piece to the puzzle. So you matter, you count, your truth does matter. So please share your experiences with people. Don't, don't harm it and hibernate now. This is not the time to hide your truth. This is the time to be bold and speak up, do something, say something, share something that you've experienced because this is the time 
for humanity to experience, call it the age of Aquarius, call it the golden age, call it a time of rectification, whatever it is, you want to be on the, on the joyful, healing, receiving, abundance, happiness. Joy. You want to experience all the good. At least I think you do. If you're watching this, I think you do. So share this video if you want. Get these algorithms going. Get me out of the shadow band where I've been stuck. And, um, you know, hopefully it'll reach the right people. It it always does. The right people will see it at the right time. That'll help whoever it is I'm supposed to be guiding. And hopefully you got something out of this. If not, I still send you love, peace, and blessings. And if you did, I love you just the same. So I'm going to say, buckle up, buttercups. Buckle up. Spring is coming. Hi, this is Linda. Thanks for tuning in. If you resonate with this video or if you receive some benefit from it, would you please consider sharing it? Thanks for your support.